Hello, and welcome to the Cleveland International Film Festival, Film Streams Post Film Conversation for Gridlock. My name is Eric Seiler, Professor of Communication, Film, and Media Arts, as well as moderator for this conversation. We are so pleased and thrilled to be joined today by the director of Gridlock, Ian Hunt Duffy. Ian's first love of the genre of cinema, uh, is, is, his first love is, um, is a cinema and he strives to make movies that will grip the audience as well as keep them guessing. Having graduated from the National Film School in Ireland, even Ian established false fail-safe films in Dublin, producing the IFTA nominated and the Academy Award long listed Love is a Sting in 2015. It was written by Academy Award winner Benjamin Clary. Ian's short film, Gridlock, which you have seen, has won 60 awards to date at over 150 film festivals, including Best Director at the Savannah International Film Festival, Best International Short Film at DC Shorts, and a Young Director Award at Cannes. So Ian's a very, very talented person. Ian, we are so thrilled that you're joining us today. Thanks very much, Eric. I'm delighted to be here. Well, great. Um, Gridlock. Uh, <laughs> What can we say about it? I mean, it's very award winning. I mean, when filmmakers set out to make films, you don't set out to say, hey, I'm going to make an award winning film. I don't just want to make a film. So did you set out that way or what inspired you to really make this film? Yeah, no, I, I didn't set out to win, win awards. And to be honest, I, if I'm honest, I didn't think Gridlock would be an award winner. Um, I had produced a previous short, Love This Thing, that we felt had a more award-winning, you know, festival-friendly feel. Um, but on the back of that, I wanted to do something like Gridlock, just something, uh, a thriller, almost like a B-movie, something that I would enjoy watching, that I would enjoy seeing if I was an audience member in a film festival. So, you know, I made the film for myself first, and it was just fortunate that uh, festivals responded to it, and it did start to win awards. Well, great. So you, I know you didn't set out to win awards, but how did you come up with the idea of Gridlock? Well, I, I love thrillers and I'm a, I'm a big fan of thrillers when they're set in a one location. And um, I just love that restricted environment when there's a story is set in one location. So one day I was actually stuck in a, a traffic jam and I was daydreaming in a traffic jam and thinking, you know, I wonder, could you set a story here? Like it's a, it's a fairly boring and mundane environment, but could you use that as a backdrop for some for a thriller? So that was kind of the initial uh, jumping off point for Gridlock. Um, and then I, I worked with the writer, uh, Derek McGarrigal. We both share a similar love of, you know, like the Twilight Zone or Alfred Hitchcock Presents, these kind of 20 minute shows that packed a lot of suspense and mystery into these 20 minute episodes. I wanted to see if that could be done in the short. So that's, that's what we set out with Gridlock. Well, in interesting. So you set out to, you were stuck in a Gridlock one day, you were inspired to do that. Um, how long did it take for you to actually um, make this film from conception to um, pose? Um, it's probably about a year, I would say. I, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the writing of the script was, you know, maybe a month or something or so. We were writing to a deadline, though, there was the, a it was a, a funding scheme in Ireland. That's where we're, that's where we're based. Um, so there was a, deb, a deadline and that for an application to submit scripts. So we wrote furiously towards this deadline and then um, we were successful then in receiving funding to make the film. And then from, if we got that funding, say November, 2015, we were shooting the summer of 2016, I think, or maybe I've got, yeah. And then, you know, it was out at the end of that year. That's kind of, so. I guess a year all told. Okay, well, yeah, that sounds about right for, um, you know, a lot of films, uh, independent films, short films. Mm. Um, I just want to um, digress for a moment just to say to the uh, students that are watching, um, please put questions in the Q&A, but one question I want to throw out to you is, I would love for you to interpret the meaning of this film and um, also the ending. What do you think happened at the end? So if you can't think of, of a question, please put that in the Q&A and um, we'll, I'll get to that and I'll um, read those to Ian and um, Ian can give us his take on that. Okay, now, but back to our conversation with you, Ian. Um, the actual shooting of the film, obviously it was in one location and 
obviously it did not take place in one day. How long did it take to actually? It was it was a five day shoot, mm-hmm. um, and you know in Ireland where 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 we shot it, we're not as blessed or as fortunate with uh, consistent weather, let's say uh, that you would have in America. So even though it was in the summer in when we shot it, uh, uh, five days, we probably had all four seasons of weather over those five days. You know, one day it might have been sunny. The next day it was raining, uh, you know, so it was difficult in that sense to kind of maintain a, a continuity, let's say, across it. But it was five days. Yeah. Outdoors. And when we, when we filmed it. Well, yeah, I think you did a really great job with the continuity without going too much into post to try to uh, make the conditions look the same. I mean, being shot in Ireland, uh, yeah. you know, I guess, you know, you know, you were hoping not to have those bright, sunny days that's consistent <laughs> <laughs> during the days. <laughs> and, that, and I just want to mention to everyone that Ian has joined us from Dublin, Ireland um, today. Um, in terms of the um, cast um, for the film, are, the, are these, um, are they, were they um, people that you knew or did you hold auditions? Um, for the main actor, um, Mo Dunford, I, I had just seen a feature film at, at a festival that you know, he was the lead in and I was just really impressed with his uh, performance. So at the festival, I, I just approached him and you know, said, look, I really like your work. I'd love, to work I, I'd love to work with you someday. And so then when the script came along, we just reached out and sent the script to him and luckily he responded to it. Um, the other actors I worked with, I'd worked with two of the other actors previously, and then the rest were auditions. Yeah, we would have, I mean, not extensive auditions. We would have just, um, you know, sent them the script, reached out, or treated our agent, and uh, we might have. I, I just had a chat with them. We would have met up for a coffee and kind of talked through the the role. But like, no, we didn't really have people come in and read for it. Okay. And what about the long young girl? <clears throat> And is that someone you know? Oh, well, sorry, we did audition for the for the daughter. Yes, that was okay. We we auditioned a couple of children for that. That was that was my first time working with a a, a child actor, so yeah, we had to audition a couple of kids for that. Um, and Robin, who played Emma in the film, yeah, she was head and shoulders above the rest when she came in. So um, we knew once she came into the audition that she was right for the role. Okay. Well, great, great. Uh, indeed, she indeed she was. Um, in terms of um, the uh, uh, the aspects of the film, I know you said you shot over five days and and so forth. And um, did you actually have? Was that actually a controlled set, or was it actually a, a, a just talk a little bit about the set itself? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's um, so we shot on a, a kind of a back road. To, um, there was a woods or forest um, in in County Kildare is where we shot it because that was the funding body was based in Kildare, and um, so one of the stipulations of the award was that you had to shoot in in Kildare. So we shot on location in uh, Donaghy Forest in Kildare. So this was like a back road into the forest that we were able to, you know, true, we're dealing with the park and the park rangers, we were able to, this, this wasn't a road that was, had public access, let's say it was a, a private access road. So we, ha- we had the run of that for the shoot. Um, so it was a locked off set. However, the, uh, we didn't have the budget for, action vehicles that we could ju- so all the cars in the traffic jam were cast and crew cars so we just you know they just parked their cars up every morning and that was their gridlock traffic jam so that was a cheap way around it but the, the only issue with that was then everyone drives away at the end of the day so you have to reset it at the start of every day yeah so but right, you know exactly. we, we, we got through it it's exactly take those um pictures so you can you know have that continuity yeah. Uh, with, with that. Um, just want to remind everyone we we're talking to the director of Gridlock, Ian Hunt Duffy, the director of um, the film. Please put your Q&As um, into the portal and I'll get to them as time allows. And I threw out a question earlier. I want you to put in the Q&A your interpretation of the film and um, also interpreting the ending. And uh, I want to get to one question that we have um, coming in. And one question um, is from, uh, says, um, as a director, um, what steps do you take to prepare yourself for production? Um, well, so I, I mean, 
obviously first off there, there i would try to have as a good rehearsal period with our cast or actors if possible it's not always possible on a short film and um, just with budgets and also um schedules of the actors timing but i would try and get at least one day where you can get the actors in and do a read through or run run through some of the blocking um, i would do an extensive shot list myself um breaking down each scene and the shots uh, that i envision and i would then work in collaboration with my cinematographer we would kind of um work on that list together um and another i don't know yeah i mean i suppose you just really break down the script as much as possible and just uh just know it inside out and then you know but also you have to there's a bit like if you can prepare a certain amount and then you have to leave uh, room for evidently the, the, the inevitably things will arise on the day you have to improvise or change things up so the more familiar you are and more prepared you are to material you can throw things away if necessary um for example like uh, this actually um was supposed to be shot all on steady cam and um, are well on a, a a stabilizer and there was technical difficulties on the first day just because we were shooting on, with anamorphic lenses and uh just to counterbalance the weight of the lenses we couldn't get it balanced correctly I, I don't know what the issue was but we were running out of time so we just said screw it let's just shoot it handheld and so that was but that was a decision we made on the fly in the day myself and my dp and you know it worked out well i i think it kind of gives it a kind of a a gritty realism to the style but that was not something that was planned but so you just have to roll with the punches and be open to you know things are going to change or you're going to be uh, given problems to have to deal with so uh prepare as much as you can but then also be prepared to to adapt i guess uh, I, absolutely um well, i just want to add to that question that we had come in is um uh did you shoot this film in sequence order? Um, I know some directors like to do that, some don't. If not, then what scene did you shoot first and what scene did you shoot last? No, we did not sh shoot sequentially. And uh, what did we shoot first? I think we may have, sh I think the first shot, I, the first uh, scene we shot was when the father comes out of the car. Once the, uh, he realizes that his daughter is missing and he, you know, start searching for you and calling her name that was kind of the first sequence i think we filmed and as for the last thing we shot um i can't remember i actually oh, actually think the, the last thing we shot was actually the, the very opening shot him driving around in the car on the phone call that was just we had to rig the car and then we'd have to we left that till last yeah so okay well good good so the, that's um that's all part of the preparation i just want to add to that question that we have come in about you know when to shoot when <laughs> um, to make the um, you know make best use of your time and your cast and crew. Mm -hmm. um, one we did get one interpretation that came, came in. One person indicated that I think the film goes beyond the actual gridlock. I think it means that sometimes people can be gridlocked with their emotions and feelings. So yeah. uh, that's one interpretation that we had come in. <laughs> so your response to that. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, the the tagline as well for the film was uh, no turning back. So it was, you know, uh, yeah, it is. It's about the character. I mean, I'm like, if people have seen this. I can talk about the ending and everything. Yeah. Or, yes. Go so, ahead. Well, I mean, uh, so the reveal at the end is that the the the, the monster, let's say, is the is the father. He's the the bad guy all along. I guess he has had his wife who he presumed was dead dead body in the boot um so yeah i mean it's a, he's gridlocked yeah he's dealing with it's like this being trapped in this traffic jam is like a physical manifestation of his guilt and uh what he's going through you know just boxing the character in it it, it does yeah so that 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 um the, the suspense that you built up through the film, you know, kind of led to that. And um, I kind of guess that, you know, he was, you know, like the um, culprit in the film, but, you know, maybe not everyone did. Um, well, uh, with that said, what has the reaction been to, um, well, on two fronts, the audience and also to the cast and crew? How did they respond to um, seeing this film? 
Yeah, no, the, I, the response has been terrific. Um, yeah, I mean, the audience, I think there's, because it's the mystery and, you know, we are pointing the finger in lots of different directions, trying to make you suspect different characters at different times. So hope it's, it's, it was, it's great to see it with an audience because you can see them, you know, whispering to each other or kind of as it goes along, saying, oh, I think it's him or, you know, making predictions about the, the, the ending. So that's, it's great. You can see them get swept up in the story, I guess, you know, so the, the response in that sense has been great with an audience. And then, yeah, the cast and crew were delighted with how it turned out. Um, as I said, we weren't sure how it would turn out because of the weather and different challenges like that. But um, to see it all come together and to to be so successful at various festivals and for audiences to really respond to it has been has been very satisfying. Well, that's very good, very good. Here's another question that we have. I was going to ask this anyway. Um, do you plan to make a sequel to Gridlock? And I, I'll add to that. Or do you plan to make a feature? It, we we haven't, but this is definitely a question that's come up a few times. So, yeah, I mean, we could possibly. I'm working on a feature film now at the minute that's unrelated to Gridlock, but with the same writer. We're we continue to collaborate, um, but possibly down the line, yeah, we could do a a feature version. I think if we were to do a feature version of Gridlock, it would probably be more uh, like so. When we even the term Gridlock makes me think of an American freeway, you know. And so it was almost uh, tongue in cheek because we're, you know, this small country road in Ireland and calling it gridlock, you know. But if we were to do the feature, we probably would want to maybe extend it out, do, you know, do the do the Hollywood version of it, I guess, the the uh, the LA freeway maybe. But um, no, no, there's no plans at the minute, but never say never. I, I see, yes, never say never. And, and that's interesting you brought up the whole gridlock, the American gridlock and, um, you know, gridlock takes on different meanings and, and no matter where you are. And the way you conceive this uh, with the, um, the uh, accident in the um, beginning with the um, horse, uh, how, how did you make that work? Was that, uh, could you talk a little bit about that um, opening scene about in, making it work? In terms of how did we shoot it or? Right, in terms of how you shoot it, how you actually make created that accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, so the horse itself is um, just like a prop horse. It's not a real. No animals were harmed in the filming of this. I was going to say uh, that. It's, Thank it's, you. It's actually it's actually made of styrofoam, so it's completely hollow. You could actually lift it up over your head very easily, and it's a uh, it's <laughs> it's a horse that anytime there's a dead horse required in shoots in Ireland, this horse seems to. Do the rounds so it's been in like vikings which films here game of thrones is featured and it's a it seems to be the dead horse that <laughs> used quite frequently so we just knew people in the art department who had worked in those shoots we were able to borrow the horse for the day and um, we actually had a real horse there that was well standing by and that horse kind of got spooked because it thought it was a dead we had killed one of its friends but uh no so it was just yeah we I mean, as I said, we had that road locked off ourselves, so we weren't, we didn't have to, you know, um, cause any interruption to traffic or the public. So we just parked up our cars, lined it up, and then put the horse and the kind of accident at the top of it. So it was fairly straightforward. Wow, that's interesting. Some great trivia there with that um, horse. Does that horse have an actual name? That prop horse? I no, I, I it probably does, but I don't. I can't. I don't think we we could just you, look. If someone wants to give it a name, go ahead. Well, interesting. Yeah, that's that's really really fascinating. That um, horse, um, you know, using it in that way and you know making it look realistic as well too. Well, um, we're just about um out of time here. Um, the uh one my final question for you is you could have um titled this, um, entitled this film with a number of different um, titles, but you chose Gridlock, uh, you could, you also said that you had a working title, No Turning Back. Why did you settle on Gridlock as a title? Um, yeah, I, I, I guess, uh, you know, as I said, it, it, Gridlock to me evoked that sort of American, like, you know, Falling Down would have been, I don't know if you remember that film from the 90s, Falling Down with Michael Douglas that opens in a, a gridlock traffic jam and that was like a touch point reference when we were coming up with it so it, it, it was almost a little bit of as i said an in joke with myself and the writers like you know gridlock that's what we want to do but we're doing the 
a stripped back. We're doing an Irish spin on, a, on an American thriller. Uh, so the, the title to me was kind of tipping our hat to the American genre film. But then by setting it in Ireland and on a small country road, that was kind of the spin on it. But also, as we touched on earlier in the conversation, gridlock can, can as you said, can be a theme of the film. Like emotionally, the characters are gridlocked, they're trapped and they have to face up to what what they've done and their guilt and the consequences of that. So um, I didn't actually like the title of Gridlock. If I'm totally honest, though, that was it was a working title. And we kind of said, look, we'll come up with something else. And then that's often the way working titles. You just uh, they they tend to stick. Well, they, they certainly do. And this one has stuck and um, and it is catchy, too. So um, it's one of those um, famous um, one name titles that yes. you know, rolls off of people's um, um, tongues. Well, Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we are pleased to be joined um, with Ian Hunt Duffy, the director of Gridlock. We appreciate all your insights that you provided about the film and spending some time with us. We wish you um, the very best. And I'd like to thank you, our audience, for joining us as well for this invigorating and important conversation. For more information about the upcoming 45th Cleveland International Film Festival, please continue to follow CIFF on social media and visit clevelandfilm.org. I'm Eric Seiler, thank you. Thanks very much.